All righty. I'm a little early, I think. But that's okay. We're near noon central here. I'm in Champaign, Illinois, and I'm coming to you live to talk about tongue articulations. All right. So let's get into it. Let me use the C harmonica today. I think it's probably the smartest thing to do, um, just given that so many people use the C harmonica. Uh, this topic was thrown out to me by one of uh, my followers who asked about this question, tongue articulation. So I'll explain what I mean by that in just a second. And I will um, demonstrate some of this and kind of give you tips on how, hello, how are you doing? Uh, and give you some tips on how to get started experimenting with uh, these different articulations and when you might want to use them, why you might want to use them. So let me just give you a little bit of insight first as to what I mean. And again, I've got a C harmonica. Let me show you what it sounds like. Um, let's, let's see what it sounds like when there's no tongue articulation going on at all. Just so you can hear uh, what, harmon what it sounds like when somebody's not using it. And then I'll explain what I mean by it and then we'll get into it. So no tongue articulation. So the most fluid sound that we can get on the harmonica is going to be without any of these tongue articulations. So when you want to be very fluid, you're going to you're not going to be thinking about these methods. Tongue articulation refers to any point of the top portion of the tongue, whether it's the front portion, middle or back that's making contact with the hard or soft palate in your mouth, the upper portion. So let's talk about what these are. Things like da, 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 ta, tucka, yucca, ka. Any of these sounds that you can make off the roof of your mouth are, the, are referred to as these tongue articulations. And the most important thing about it, like what you need to know is that people are using these to become more staccato-like in their playing, to separate their ideas and to just stop a note quickly. So duh, duh is a really good starting place. Um, duh, just D-U-H, duh. And you're, you're saying this word, let's try it on the one, two, three draw chord on a C harp. Duh. So you're not verbalizing, vocalizing rather, anything in your throat, you're just going So this is really good for chords when you're trying to become more rhythmic in your playing. Da, da. You could use ya, ya on these chords. Any of these would work, anything that separates the note of the chord. Do da is a really common combination of articulations I'm using. Do would give you more of the bent note, let's say on three draw half step. Da gives you the clean note because it opens your throat to the opposite shape, which is the tongue down flat, no bending. Do any ooh kind of you're starting to bend ooh gives you the tongue upward. So if you try saying do da do da, it's a little weird. On three draw, you'll get and when you get good at this, it's really nice to be able to mix up the combination of articulating notes and then not using this method of articulating. So the only articulation was the first part of the phrase. So the big thing about it is, again, that the tongue is coming off of the roof of the mouth. How about tucka? One of the first things I ever learned from a great teacher, J.P. Allen, was tucka toodle. And that tucka toodle was, uh, hey everybody, that tuck-a-toodle was a cool thing that he taught me about 
uh, for getting just rhythms going, chugging. So on an A harp, that tucker toodle thing was like tucker on the inhale and toodle on the exhale. The toodle was articulated, but really gentle. I never developed the super fast rhythm out of those combinations, but it got me thinking about other articulations like yucca tucka and yucca tucka d. All these things they're so great for your rhythm playing. So if you want to get good at practicing these, I would say separate your practice with tongue articulations into two categories. The first one being uh, rhythm and rhythm and chordal practice, and the other one uh, could you fit into melody playing or into any kind of riffing or improvisation where you select just specific moments where you're going to go for these articulations. Back to the C harp. One of my favorite articulations is dow, D-O-W, or saying the word ow, but using the D sound first. And if you use that on a... Uh, four draw, three, two draw, any of these areas where you got some draw bends underneath, which is, you know, all of these notes, one through six, but especially like on four, let's look at that. You try saying Dow, and what you get out of it is this beautiful kind of um, articulation that gives you a really emotional kind of call here. So again, I'm on a C doing this on four draw. So if, if you don't articulate, and I was saying you get the most fluid approach, and by articulating, you get the staccato approach, you know? You, how do you decide when to use one versus the other? Um, it's, a, it's kind of a tricky question, and really the answer is, is that in time, your experience will dictate. You won't have to think, like, should I use this articulation here or not? Your musical instincts all of a sudden start to develop to the point where you realize that's the sound I want and you just start doing it. You can develop it quicker by, I think, by practicing the examples. So let's, maybe I could teach you a riff today and give you the example of where it would go. So I'm not gonna think, I'm just gonna play a riff. All right, there's the articulation on the notes three and four. Sorry, yeah, three and four. It just gives us perfect separation between the four bend and the four draw. So what am I using to articulate the notes? I'm saying do da. The next note is bent, but I didn't articulate it. I didn't go. I just went. But you could. So the coolest thing is to start mixing them within the phrase. Like the last note got an articulation. Just to give you these examples so you can start to recognize whether a player is using it or not. Da, and then do da. So this is two draw, three draw half step bend and three draw. The upward end of your harp, you're having some trouble with that. Well, playing the upward top end of the harp, any tips? Maybe we can get to that. Yeah, hey, Michael. Um, so, well, we're talking about tongue articulations today. If you want to get good at playing the upper end of the harmonica, just ease up on your breath and relax your embouchure and let the tongue relax. You'll have much better luck getting sweet notes up top.
just try going, try this with me going da 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 da. It kind of sounds like a, <laughs> I don't know what you call that, but just try, just try going, taking two draw and saying da 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 da. It's a really cool way to get your tongue to start just moving and get the muscle memory. It's a relaxed feeling when the tongue is doing these articulations. So I think you'll, you'll develop this naturally if you start practicing it. Um, if you want something very separated and, and isolated sounding where the notes really stand out, that's, that's this articulated staccato method. You know, I'm going overboard to let you hear these examples. So when you're separating the notes, like these kind of bendings where you go, that might be a really good way to, that's draw two, draw half step two, and full step on two. The cool thing is it's an option, but if you don't use a blend of the this, this approach of staccato and non-staccato, you're playing uh, will sound sort of one directional, I guess. So I think the biggest advantage, like I said earlier, is that it, it sort of opens up, it gives more, how can I put this? It gives your playing uh, a more multi-dimensional sound. I'm not trying to get too far out there, but like, that's why I always talk about blending different techniques into one phrase and things like that. The more you can vary the sound coming out of your instrument, the more ch the better chance you have of somebody listening to really pay attention and keep them focused on what you're doing. And the less of that you do, you kind of lose yourself, I think. So it's like keeping yourself on your own toes. Like, And this goes for tongue blocking too. I will admit that the only tongue blocking I really use uh, that's super articulated is just a slap. And that's not exactly what we're talking ab about today. A tongue slap is when the, you know, the tongue's going on the harmonica, on and off chord to single note, but a full-time tongue blocker that's bending notes as a tongue blocker can still, you can still kind of get this articulation going. I just don't happen to use it that way. When I'm articulating these, these types of things I'm talking about today, I'm puckering. Ka, ka, and ka, ka, we didn't talk about those. I don't use those too often, I'll be honest. I don't really use that. That's the way back part of your tongue. Yeah, so like, yeah, Junior Wells is a great example, Shane. Good, good call there. So like, do da would be a lot of some of those. He does a lot of these staircasing type of. Not exactly like this, but I'm saying, and when he's doing that, I hear him using like do and da and. Um, Luddle, little. I remember Joe Felisco once talking about Luddle and la. You can even use the L sound. It's a really gentle articula articulation. I think he was using that on like a Sunny Boy song, I wanna say. Um, uh, I could use a B flat, Dwayne, but I don't think everyone has a B flat, so that's why I'm sticking to a C. Uh, is it live now? I hope I'm live now, I believe so. I don't know if that's what you mean. Uh, Da da on two draw gives you a bunch of speed. So it, think about it, articulation in the staccato world with these articulations, that is one huge advantage. You can just separate notes so fast you can develop speed. So in funk, when you're playing funk music, there's a lot of articulation going on because it's very staccato, the approach to the playing it. You still can use the fluidity like Right? 
so in that kind of song, what is that? What am I playing there? Anybody know? Sissy Strut, right? I believe. So we're using two draw. Let's play a little bit of this together as a kind of a, a way to bring all this talk home about articulation. Take the two draw, da da, and then same thing, da da on the full step. Back to the two draw twice. Da da, da da, da da. And the two in the middle are the full step. Um, I've ever blown a reed? Oh yeah, I mean, I've never sucked a reed through my harmonica like James Cotton, but I've definitely blown out a reed. But the better you get at playing harmonica, the less you blow them out. Right on, right on. Maybe I can pick up that B flat harmonica at the end of, of this session today. The next note is three draw half step. We don't need to articulate that. Back to the two draw. And then. Da, 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 da. All of this is articulated because that's how that horn phrase goes. Um, so if you want to get good at this, maybe practice like listening. Just start listening to funk. Listen to the meters. You know, if you don't have any meters in your collection, uh, that would be a good one to get. I don't know what a Suzuki 350 is. Yeah, we are just talking about the articulations, tongue block versus lip purse. And for me, I'm doing all these articulations puckered, lip pursed. But on the tongue blocking, you can absolutely achieve this kind of effect. The, the, the disconnect, I think, is that your tongue is already on the harmonica. But that doesn't mean that you can't lift it um, or bring it off the top of the harmonica. I'm sorry, the top of the roof, the roof of the mouth there. But really, you're getting into more of that tongue slapping at that point. But chords would be a great way to start this, guys. If you're not playing... Just try saying, you know, ta-ta or da-da on these chords. If you like this kind of stuff, I got an entire lesson you can download called the Front Porch Sessions. And that, on that class, I... I talk about chord articulations and all this kind of stuff and show you how to mix it up. Oh yeah, yeah. Good good call there on Ken Heat and Alan Wilson. Uh, there's some really cool stuff going on. You can articulate bends. Here, I'm gonna leave you, I'm gonna go to the B flat harmonica um, and play you one of my favorite rhythms. And the articulation I'm using on this one is the inhales he, which is not a tongue articulation, but the rest is ducka d, and then hudda, which is also not an art a tongue articulation, but listen to the way this sounds. B flat, harmonica, played in F. certainly get a lot of speed out of these types of articulations. But don't forget, if you're not balancing it out with the unstaccato stuff, you're really missing out. How am I doing that on the B flat? I'm doing he duck a D on the inhale. He duck a D. Just breathe in. Don't vocalize it. And then hudda is gentle on the, on the exhale for the one, two, three, draw chord and blow chord. The hudda becomes quick. Hudda, hudda. It's 
sounds great, especially on like a G or a low F. Yeah, yeah, is such a good chord one. Don't forget that. There's one Dow Dow. We talked about that on the fourth. It's really like an ow or dow. You can do that on the five as well. What is the tongue doing when I'm doing the heat ducka stuff? Whoops. What is the tongue doing when you're doing he ducka? It's 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 going through the motions of articulating that, George. So you're saying right? Right? So you're just going, it's bouncing off the, wherever that, just gotta, just gotta try to articulate he, he is not articulated, she's going, tongue, it's articulated in the sense that it's like a reverse cat hiss, instead of going, you're breathing in, so you get a thin chord, so you're changing the, the sound of all this. What was that comment? What? Talking about your wolf. Ronnie cut his head with the fast. Oh. Okay. I don't remember that. <laughs> Triplets is a great one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call. Triplets give you this kind of um, a, a well-known triplet. Again, this is a B-flat harmonica, but that I put out in that funky blues harmonica was, and people were writing me all the time saying, ah, what is that, what are you doing? <laughs> doi da da, doi da da. Doi is on the bend on four. It kind of released, but I'm going doi. So the tongue's coming off the, off the top of the mouth. And then da da is on four or five draw. William Clark did a great one of these, but he brought in the five draw. He went. You probably remember him doing that. Um, and so you can take triplets. Not all triplets do you want a staccato, but some you do. Like this is a great one. You can bring it to three and four. On two draw, doi da da doi da da. But sometimes triplets are not staccatoed at all. Like, they're the opposite, they're fluid. So I was playing Eyesight to the Blind. That's the song you were talking about. Okay. Um, I don't use this, I wanna point out that we didn't talk much about the high end of the harmonica today. And the reason is, is because I'm not really using a lot of articulations on the high end. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just, just maybe how I developed, but like sometimes twa, dwa, or like a, like a T sound, twa, twa, that's weird to say that, but can give you a nice separation on that like nine blow bend, but you don't need to do that. I mean, it's an option. They're good, they are good for that. If you just want a quick note, twa, twa. If you can blow bend and you haven't tried that. Yeah, whammer jammer. Well, I don't know what you mean by that as far as this topic. Not all of whammer jammer has all these articulations, um, especially not that high note. Um, it's not tongue articulated in that case. All these guys use it that, were, that are being brought up here. Um, So if you're going, dwa, dwa, dwa. So I guess I am using it uh, occasionally up top.
There's a B flat still, everybody. But you don't need it. That's the key thing. It's all about decision making in the moment. Like, what am I going for? That quick note and nothing after it? Or am I kind of moving around in that fluid fashion? Unarticulated, no, no staccato. A bunch of staccato. like that how do you stop the yeah, excess air coming from your nose on those triplets well I'm not sure how to answer that um you know I think about it like this I guess one tip I could give you is uh it's like snorkeling if you've ever been snorkeling you just can't let you don't you want to try not to breathe out of your nose and I don't know how to train somebody to do that. I've seen people doing this when they play. That's kind of silly. I think there's got to be a better way. It is a real issue for people that, uh, the only time you want air coming out of your nose, everybody, and there is a time when you when you want it, is when you're using it like a release valve for air, excess air, that you don't need because you're trying to then go to a draw note. You'd either lose that air intentionally, let it escape out of the side of your mouth, typically, over the top of the comb of the harmonica, sometimes the nose. And you know it's happening because you'll feel it on your fingers. And I feel it often on, on the side and top, so I know I'm getting air out in multiple areas that way. But I, it's a good question, and I don't have a great answer for it. Um... You just gotta work on it, everybody. Let me see if I missed any questions here. Chetlins con carne, cool. Junior Wells, yeah. Nick Clark uses your articulated teaching. Okay, cool. I'd listen to anything he said because that guy can play his ass off. Yeah. Yeah, Chitlins is a good song for that. So everybody, go check Shane's right. Check out Chitlins Con Carne because think about the way the song goes. All the notes are separated. Almost all. bunch any kind of phrase that's separated you're thinking of these articulations i want to remind you that i will be active as hell on face on facebook and youtube i meant to say youtube but um a whole bunch so you can catch me here regularly i may not set up the schedule because i like using my phone like i'm using today and it won't let you schedule as far as i know from your phone you can only do that on a desktop or laptop computer um, yeah, so you might just see me going live. Um, just subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified. <laughs> I don't have any Irish tunes for you. If you want some great Irish harmonica playing, James Conway is your guy. Subscribe to James's, James Conway's YouTube channel. Um, maybe somebody can find it and post it, or I'll do, the, I'll do that after the fact. But he is a world-class harmonica player in Chicago, and he's a good friend of mine. He's a killer blues guy, but he plays that Irish music like nobody. He's got a clip out of him doing bab. Look up bagpipe harmonica. Yeah, that low F is super nice. No, uh, good question. So Junior Wells messing with a kid. He's not using on that opening line you're probably talking about. If I just do it on a C real quick. Um... Why no green shirt? I know, I missed the bow. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, 
You could slap the note and kind of articulate it that way. But you don't, you don't hear it in the phrase, it's pretty smooth. Uh, but you hear him playing in that song, all the rest of it, a bunch of tongue articulations. Yeah, there's bagpipe harmonica. Go, just go look up James Conway bagpipe harmonica. It's ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, it's less common to think about it um, in the tongue blocking world. But it works in every position, guys. We're not talking about specific to position, which is cool. You can experiment with this just in your phrasing in general. So... Today's topic, tongue articulation, is something you should bring in and to consider in your playing when to, pre when to use it. And um, you can catch me live most likely, to, most likely tomorrow and most days. I'm at home like everybody. We were talking about this the other day. Um, all the gigs are canceled. Um, all my events for March and April canceled. So... What do you do when that's canceled? You come online and hang out and share what you can. So I'm happy to do these, these clips. You wanna support back, check out the online classes. I always put those in the video descriptions. I'll leave you with a little jam on the B flat. Don't forget, besides these classes, you're doing it wrong. Hey, I'm working on it, man. I'll, I'll work on it. We'll come back and see what I can get, up, get going. Um, I'm also doing a house concert. So April 4th, if you want to check out one of the best singers that I know, Mr. Andrew Duncanson, um, he and I are doing a house concert right here April 4th um, for a nominal, nominal ticket charge. Maybe I'll put a link to that in the video description as well. I'll hope to see more of you online in this coming week. I don't know if I'll do it every day, but I'll do it many days. Um, as long as I'm at home and and not on the road here, I'm, I'm going to be active on YouTube. So I hope to catch you soon. And this Saturday is that first position class, so why don't I just leave with some first position. Thanks for hanging out today, everybody. Hope you guys have a wonderful day.